Good morning, good evening, and GM. Welcome to the Magpie Next Weekly Podcast, hosted by your sincerely host, Tim. And this podcast is recorded live on LinkedIn Audio Events and Twitter Spaces and will be uploaded to YouTube and Spotify. So don't worry if you miss an episode, but do remember to follow at Magpie Next on Twitter, Instagram, Spotify, and YouTube. So for those of you who are new to this channel, Magpie Next is a platform created to discover the next big thing in technology. And in this specific podcast, we bring you the latest news and trends in the world of technology in the past week and explore its impact on various industries to keep you informed about what you should know. Before we continue, please note our standard disclaimer. The views and opinions expressed on this podcast are those of the host and do not necessarily reflect the official policy or position of his employer. The information shared on this podcast is for educational and entertainment purposes only and should not be construed as professional advice and financial advice or recommendations and we are not responsible for the accuracy of the content shared on this podcast. So we do have a really interesting week and I think it is really interesting because a lot of big tech companies are starting to come up with new use cases for AI, generative AI, especially like Meta and Google and a lot of these companies are kind of from what I understand is reviewing the past products that they have done and incorporating conversational AI to improve them, okay? So let's move on to our first news. Basically, this is a, the first two news is related to Google. So the first news is that Google, a new AI model, basically could now translate vision and languages into robot action. So what happened is that in a groundbreaking development in the fields of robotics, Google has introduced a robotics transformer 2, which is called RT2. It is a vision language action model, which is a VLA, that brings us closer to a future of truly helpful robots, right? So in order for a robot to help contribute to the physical realm, it must be able to receive data, right? It must be able to receive data and really to understand how that the data is, you know, the input and then it provides an output, right? So that's usually how it works. So basically what happened is that they are able to create a model where they were able to have the robot, okay, that is trained on checks and images from the web to kind of inform them to carry out robotic actions, okay? So unlike previous systems that require explicit training for specific tasks, the special thing about RT2 is that it can translate knowledge from a large corpus of web data to understand objects and perform actions. So even for tasks that has never been trained on. So it's kind of like the next step of machine learning, right? So this advancement holds promise for robots to adapt rapidly to novel situations and environment because sometimes when you put a robot in a whole new environment, it must need to know how to perform a certain action, right? It, it must it needs that sense of quick turnaround that humans have, right? So now that this is being trained, or like this model is being deployed, our robots will have a more resilience towards the environment around them and the input data around them. So testing, what they did is that they were testing RT2 in over 6,000 robotic trials. So researchers found that it's performed as well as its pre predecessor, which is RT1. So a lot of these are, uh, you know, models being trained in the past, but new upgrades to these models and also how, you know, generative AI and this uh, whole AI hype is able to, you know, usher a new era of more resources, I guess, to carry out more um, AI related um, tasks and also AI related projects. So. What happened is that in this its performance, okay, novel unseen scenarios nearly doubled to an impressive 62% compared to RT1's 32%, right? So it's kind of like a double of the, the resilience of that uh, robot in, in new environments and in taking in new data and to respond to it, right? So this is kind of like an ability to transfer learned concepts to new situations and it brings robot to a closer kind of like a human um, being, like what? Is that being programmed, now they could kind of make some sort of decision making, right? With the inputs that they're given and some sort of knowledge that they have. So there's still work to be done, but it is an exciting leap towards the development of a more general purpose robot in the future. So, and also how robots could immediately respond in a more human centered environment where the, va the variables are not standard and there's a lot of changes happening at the same time. So this is, you know, Google in a field of robotics, but at the same time, Google and, you know, has been doing a lot of stuff in generative search. So they came up with an update because now this is just the beginning of August. So they came up with an August update, a, like what is coming up in Google search. And then, so basically what happened is that 
Google is now enhancing its search experience with generative AI technology to provide users with faster and more relevant information. So the AI powered search experience now termed as SGE, okay? It now includes images and videos and overviews to help users better understand topics. So it's able to, you know, in the results that it gives you include videos and also images to help you better understand the specific thing that you're searching for, right? So for example, when you're searching something for the tiniest birds of prey, user can see images of the bird and get related information. Additionally, video will be introduced and some overviews to provide demonstration of visual instructions. So now that um, the, the generated search is now able to possibly um, show you a different type of file content format, but also have some sort of maybe generated things to support it. So to improve the speed, Google has reduced the time it takes for generated AI overview by half. So there's a 50% like, you know, polishing the speed of the AI uh, to give you a result. Uh, ensuring faster access to information for user. So the goal is to provide quick and comprehensive responses whether users are looking for nearby lunch boxes, uh, spots or uh, researching complex topics. So to help the users explore further, they will include links um, to search results alongside each AI overview, okay? So Google has added published data to these links to indicate the recency of the information on the web page, and they're now also experimenting new ways for users to find web pages that support the information presented in AI overviews, okay? So this whole experience thing is not the traditional a overview, but it's the Google search AI overview, right? So during this enhanced search experience, right? Search ads will continue to appear in dedicated slots, okay? So advertising is still a core business for them. It's still gonna be there. Users can try these updates in Search Lab, which is available on the Google app on Android, iOS, and also on Chrome desktop. So you can see that Google is you know, trying to consolidate the position in Search. And now they're introducing AI supported search and also how our AI could come up with better ways or more efficient ways to give the user the information that they need in a more faster way, a more timely way, and more relevant way. So we have Google with robotics. We have Google with generative search. There's actually another really interesting thing, which is I'm not sure if you know this before, but there's something called a Google Assistant, all right? So Google Assistant was back created back then when uh, IoT was a hype, right? People were talking about, you know, smart devices, smart speakers. So Google Assistant is actually a smart speaker. So where what you can do is that you could buy this speaker, you know, log into your Google account, link it with other IoT devices, and then say, hey, Hey Google, um, turn on the lights for me. Hey Google, turn on the television for me, and so on, right? So this is how it works, right? But this is actually a AI smart device or smart speaker. And so what happened is that according to some research or some uh, observer, you know, Google is planning a significant overhaul of its assistant, shifting focus to utilize generative AI technology similar to those that powers ChatGPT and Bot Chatbot according to an internal email by Axios, okay? So Axios is kind of like a tech server company entity. So the company aims to transform assistance functionality for consumers. So this is not out yet, but it shows that the internal workings of Google, how they're now looking at, you know, the past products that they have and adding conversational AI and generative AI to enhance this product. So what they have done is that they have already initiated that work on the revamp assistant, um, starting with the mobile version. So the reorganization of teams working on assistant is underway while the company is making layoffs as part of the shift, okay? So it's kind of like pivoting to a new thing, like, uh, oh, it's, it's going to be more AI focused. And then there's some internal restructuring, right? So according to the uh, email from Google VP, okay, and, and the director, you know, the company sees vast potential in generative AI and is keen on exploring the like, possibilities of a supercharged assistant powered by the language, uh, large language model, right? Uh, and then now they also combine the services and service team under new leadership, operating the mobile team separately and appointing new leaders for the uh, natural language processing team. Okay. So, you know, you can see that this is kind of like integrating services across and making the assistant more able to deploy these services by making them to a closer structure. But actually in this, at the same time, besides these layoffs and also uh, organizational restructuring, similar moves are being made by other companies like Amazon, which is working on an AI powered reboot for its digital assistant, Alexa. And uh, both Google and Amazon has been redirecting the efforts away from traditional digital assistant in the past year to more generative AI assistance. And so that the whole experience will be more conversational. 
you know, sometimes when I think about, you know, AI and so on, generative AI, and also especially conversational AI, is that you will see a lot of companies trying to de-intermediatorize, something like that, right? Basically, removing certain middlemen. For example, in the past, let's say if you buy an ad, okay, on Google, right? You could do it yourself or you could hire someone to do it for you with an expertise in that. And now you can see that a lot of this is being done with a chatbot, right? So instead of having uh, to talk with that person, your requirement, you will be typing into a text box or recording your voice and then it will use a conversa conversational way like, oh, what ads do you want to buy? When do you want to buy it? How do you want to buy it? And so on, so on. So it's much easier to buy that ad. But the issue with this is that, you know, robots or maybe AI is more straightforward, right? There are some industry norms or there are some industry knowledge that AI might not have, which is very hard to train because it changes from time to time and it comes from experience. So to a certain extent, it kind of like you can see that a lot of these companies or platforms are pivoting towards a more conversational way of making things happen. But by removing those people in the middle, you kind of lose another layer of expertise and that expertise could be crucial to a success and failure of a campaign. So I think it's interesting to see that. So moving on to the next news, um, Stack Overflow. You know, Stack Overflow is a platform used collaboratively by a lot of people uh, or companies um, to work on projects, programs, and so on. They have decided to introduce an AI roadmap. So what they have done is that they have reviewed a roadmap for integrating generated AI on the public platform. So um, Stack Overflow for Teams. And they will now introduce a new product area under the umbrella of Overflow AI. So the focus of this is to maintain the core values of Stack Overflow while harnessing the power of AI. So while the major investment of implementation is semantic search using a vector database to provide more intelligent and conversational search results that aligns with the user's uh, research topic. So you can see it's more conversational now, right? So by tapping into the knowledge of over 58 million questions and answers from the Stack Overflow community, they aim to build a reliable and instant conversational search experience, right? So now it's more conversational. You chat with it to get uh, results. So the improvement in search capabilities will extend to Stack Overflow for Teams, enabling customers to swiftly access the most relevant answers, discover related uh, knowledge from trusted sources. This includes leveraging Stack Overflow for Teams, the public platform, and other repository like Confluence and Git. The integration of these various knowledge sources ensures that developers have comprehensive and reliable information ecosystem at their fingertips, empowering them to find solutions efficiently and effectively. Another significant addition is the enterprise knowledge injection feature for Stack Overflow for Teams. So this functionality allows users to quickly create and build a knowledge base by leveraging existing accurate and trusted content. So with the assistance of AI and machine learning technology, the system generates tagging structures and will command questions and answers based on the team's frequent documentation or solution seeking platform. So this empowers developers to focus on adding value by creating and refining the content while ensuring its accuracy. So this knowledge base becomes discoverable and reusable within the internal community. So it's really about efficiency, trimming down the search time, providing more relevant content, making it more conversational. So you can see that overall, this whole world map kind of, you know, highlights the commitment to integrating AI in a manner that aligns with the core values and cater to the needs of the developer community. And yeah, you can see basically they're introducing more generative AI related or just machine learning or AI related services and products on the platform. So that's Stack Overflow, which is pretty interesting. So they announced this Overflow AI. So moving on to our next news, we have two news from Meta, okay? So Meta, uh, I think we all know is the parent company of Facebook and Instagram. They have decided to introduce something called AI Persona. So it's reportedly preparing to launch AI-powered chatbots with various personas as early as next month, right? So these chatbots will engage, so next month is basically September, okay? These chatbots will engage in human-like conversations with users on Meta's social platform. So it kind of makes you think that in the future, if you're chatting with someone, if that person is not your friend, how can I make sure that person is not an AI, right? That sounds like a human being and is very considerate, right? But interestingly, what happened is that, you know, each chatbot will have a distinct personality, such as like a server advising users on travel plans or one that speaks like Abraham Lincoln. And then Meta sees this strategy uh, as a way to enhance user engagement on this platform, offering search capabilities and recommendations and also providing a fun experience for the user. 
So there will be different personas, different type of personalities. You can chat with this AI to help you for a specific thing and to make that search or information gathering more interesting on the platform. So um, an interesting discussion is that the introduction of these chatbots is expected to wise, raise privacy concern as they have the potential to collect significant amount of user data because people will be chatting with these chatbots, giving them inputs and so on. These data could be utilized by Meta to improve content targeting and advertising, which you can see, oh, you know, a server personality advising you on travel plans. That is very advertising driven, right? So uh, similar to Meta, right? This is not the first tech company to introduce something like that. If you remember correctly, Snapchat has done something the same as well, right? They have embraced uh, AI chatbot, my AI before, powered by OpenAI's GPT technology. So the introduction of that chatbot in that scenario has some mixed reviews and concerns were raised about the interaction with young adults on adult subjects, right? So it is anticipated that Meta's chatbot may face similar concerns because, you know, as we said, humanity and humans are very unexpected, right? There's a lot of unexpected situations. When being raised these, uh, of these un unexpected situations, how will these AI react to it, right? Even though they're still learning. So it's really interesting to see how during Meta's recent earning calls, CEO Mark Zuckerberg mentioned that the company is building a range of AI-powered products and will provide more details later this year. Uh, and then he emphasized the potential for AI to add assistant coaches, facilitators, or interactions with business and creators. And the roadmap is expected to be unveiled at the Connect Developer Conference, which I think is interesting because it's coming in in September. And uh, the Connect develop conference is something that I actually watched in the past few years because um they were focusing on the metaverse, they're focusing on potentially web free and there's a lot of things that you can kind of see what Meta is doing behind the scene if you join this Connect kind of Developer Conference and it's available and it's stream stream live online. You can watch your videos, right? So besides this, you do see another really something that you can touch, right? Something that you can immediately deploy, which is uh, Meta introduces uh, audio craft in the last week. So what happened is that AudioCraft is a groundbreaking AI tool that allows you to effortlessly generate high quality music and audio from simple text form. So for example, if you have professional musicians, they can explore new compositions without touching an instrument. They can just type a text prompt uh, to this AudioCraft and then this AudioCraft will generate the music based on that text prompt. Right? And as, at the same time, small businesses can easily add captivating soundtracks to their videos without infringing any potential copyright, right? Uh, if AI could generate that music, because one of the biggest issue with content creation is that you keep getting your content flagged, like, oh, copyright infringement. Uh, someone is claiming a copyright for that music, that background music that you use, right? But if it's generated by AI, and if they could run some sort of algorithm that, oh, this is not going to be repeated or something like that, then it could solve a very big problem. So our uh, audio craft consists of three models, music gen, audio gen, and, and Kodak. Music Gen generates music from text form using specifically licensed music, okay? So it's kind of like the data set is specifically licensed for a certain purpose. While Audio Gen creates audio from text prompts using publicly available sound effects. And at the same time, Meta is trailed to release an improved version of Encodec, Decoder, enabling higher quality music generator with fewer artifacts. So pre-trained audio gen models are now available. So if you can uh, go to the GitHub, you can basically deploy it and then just uh, use it for research purposes. So they're introducing this new uh, audio LM, right? It's similar to Google where they introduced music LM. So while generative AI has made significant progress in image, video, text, audio has lagged due to its complexity and limited accessibility. So generating high fidelity audio requires models that uh, in intricate signals and patterns at different scale, right? So music is something that has a lot of variations. So it's not that easy, but now these machine learning models are catching up to understand music and then generate it, right? So this audio crap is a versatile tool that covers music, sound, compression, and generation all in one place, right? Because you have music, but you can also add effect to that music, right? And then this tool can do that. So it's really interesting to see how people can generate music using this tool, because I think one of the cases that I've seen is how you could basically upload a melody of Chin Cho Chin Little Star and then prompt it to make it like a, you know, heavy metal guitar solo of Chin Cho Chin Little Star. So it's really interesting to see people without possibly music knowledge or people who use MIDI files, which is electronic music files, or, or you know, the keys that are being played in that uh, song. And then instead of running it through really complicated programs, 
virtual music machines and so on. They could just run it with an AI and say, hey, this is the MIDI file of the song. Please play this in the style of etc. and etc. and etc. And it generates a backing track that you can use. Right? So that is a matter for you. A lot of big things happening from that company. And I'm sure that we'll see more in September when the you know, Meta Connect Developer Conference comes out. And then the next one is actually pretty interesting, and that is uh, OpenAI teases ChatGPT5 the trademark filing. So what happened is that OpenAI has filed a trademark application for GPT5, indicating that progress in the development of AI technology is moving at a very rapid pace. So they have submitted this application to the United States Patent uh, Trademark Office, and it covers a wide range of software-related uh, language models and AI. Uh, the categories uh, include language processing, generation, understanding, and analysis, as well as machine learning predictive analysis and artificial neural network. So it, it, it shows that, you know, AI development, uh, and especially ChatGPT is still happening, right? We have ChatGPT 3, I don't know, 3.5, 4, and then now we have 5. Yeah. So it's interesting to see how, how fast, you know, this technology could move. So talking about adopting technologies and so on, um, they're actually looking at into incorporating an AI chatbot, right? But to enhance it apps and improve customer service, marketing, and other automated tasks. So uh, the Uber CEO Dawa confirmed that the company is capability, but highlighted the existing use of AI as matching drivers and uh, are curious with customers. Based on now incorporating AI and also how this AI maybe can help them get more steamers or some other sort of Uber services that could be used uh, to retrieve data from a user. So, for example, in a, uh, new Uber's competitors in the delivery space, right, like DoorDash, right, and Instacart, of not just chatbots, but conversational AI-powered chatbots, right. So, uh, DoorDash has worked on a system called Dash AI to streamline ordering and help customers discover food options on the app. And then, in a similar vein, uh, you know, Instagram Cart, not not Instagram Cart, Instacart has launched a feature called Ask Instacart, which usually access OpenAI's uh, API. So it's really how a lot of uh, tech trends and also the updates on the news of the world of technology. So with a lot of technology brands launching um, new products and uh, AI and conversational AI generated, um, it is really important you know, to stay on top of these news and to you know, get yourself well equipped and know what to expect and also how these companies are being positioned. And uh, we will continue to update you on the latest development and trends in the field of AI technology. And don't forget to tune in next week for more interesting topics and discussions. Thank you for listening to the Magpie Next Weekly Podcast hosted and uploaded to YouTube and Spotify. See you guys later.